As an IT professional, I'm often asked about free web hosting, whether it's worth it and who's best to go with. The most reviewers in reality just read other reviewer comments or read feature lists. I thought I'd do something a bit different. So over the last 12 months, I've been moving two live websites between three of the longest established free web hosting providers to see what their service is actually like. So these are the companies I looked at. FreeWebHostingArea.com, 000Webhost, iFastNet, which is the brand behind Bike.host, Infinity Free, and many, many other brands. I was also planning to look at Googie Host because it's pretty popular these days, but their website was throwing this beautiful error, which basically meant it just wasn't going to go anywhere. Okay, I started with the freehostingarea.com service. It's a very no frills service, and the site really does show that by the look and feel. But the setup was actually perfectly simple. The control panel was, well, let's say basic. You can't really do an awful lot with that. Speed of the site, though, to be fair, was perfectly acceptable. And I contacted support on a couple of occasions and got a really fast response, as in within about 10 minutes. Albeit, I did seem to get through to the same person each time. Make of that what you will. Beyond that, the lack of email as a feature, which comes with a higher paid service, but we're not spending money as part of this review, of course. Um, that was a real frustration. Cloudflare didn't seem to work for me. I tried to set that up. It's not part of their service, but I tried to set it up separately. Didn't seem to want to work with their service. And there's no SSL as part of this, which is really a bit of a must have now for any search engine optimization. Most frustratingly, actually, was that on their site, they declare there's no advertising on um, customer websites, and yet there was their own branding on the websites, which I just felt was a little bit misleading. Next, I moved on to 000webhost.com, which I know a lot of people won't touch with a barge pole since the security breach in 2015, with quite the situation they created and how they handled it. In my experience, the cost challenges of free services means this isn't actually that uncommon, and these guys have actually been forced to resolve the situation as a result of the breach being so public, and actually that kind of puts them in a stronger position potentially than many other providers that have just not had to step their security up. So what were they actually like to host with? Well, it was a much nicer site and portal. It just made life a huge amount easier and looked a lot more professional to work with. The setup again was fairly simple to do and although they also don't provide email they do provide email forwarders which made it just that little bit more bearable to do business with i managed to get cloudflare working really well with 00 web host and i use this to turn on ssl on my site of course for free and once again another host that's declaring no adverts but putting their branding on your website i just find it misleading Support was via a community forum and I did use that. It seemed a pretty friendly space. I wasn't convinced there was any official support on the forum. It felt like there were volunteers um, choosing to help escalate matters into 00 web host when necessary. Over the period of several months of use, the FTP service just remained unstable for me, regularly dropping throughout communications. And that can't be a one-off issue over that period, so I wasn't impressed with that back-end service. There were also a lot of prompts for upgrading, which I kind of understand from Hostinger. Emails and screen prompts constantly to spend money to get more from your hosting. I was generally, however, relatively impressed with their service. That wasn't until I found a fairly major issue in that Anyone accessing your site via Chrome would receive this error message when trying to post uh, from any form. So that might be a contact form, it might be a login space, but it completely destroyed your site for Chrome users, which is, you know, 70, 80% of the community. So not a very helpful error. The community forum was talking about it, um, but over the series of a couple of months, nothing has happened at the time of, of this review. So finally, I moved to what I'm calling iFastNet. It's actually their infrastructure. I signed up through Byte.host, but there's also Infinity Free and many, many other free resellers effectively um, selling the iFastNet service. 
I went with bike.host because it's actually run by iFastNet themselves and therefore I thought was least likely to give an inconsistent experience with iFastNet's core infrastructure. So on the good side, setup once again was a really simple process as it had been for all the other service providers. Portal itself was perfectly fine, not luxurious in any way, but if you're used to the cPanel experience, it was a very similar product. So familiarity for people coming from a cPanel background is pretty high. They also had email set up, albeit webmail only for free users, but it certainly won up on the other providers in this review. Cloudflare as well was not only something that was easy to set up, but was actually integrated into the portal. So again, made it a really simple exercise to get that up and running. When it came to the speed of my website, I was using Google Page Insights as well as other tools to check that out. Page Insights in particular really identified that the Byte.host service was a much faster website than others, so might be getting you a slightly higher search engine ranking, which was a real nice positive. And the bane of my life branding of my website on a free web hosting provider, there was no branding of my website, which was excellent. So I actually had full control of my own website, which was really nice. No adverts, no branding at all. The FTP was probably a little bit more reliable than 000 web host, but nevertheless, it wasn't completely reliable. This seems to be a common thing with free web hosting providers. Basically, the servers obviously put customers, I should say the uh, front end customer to your website first. So FTP services are a lower priority service and hence they tend to see a more degraded experience than the website itself. I contacted support on a few occasions and each time got a response within an hour from level one. There were occasions that needed to be elevated up to a level two, which took a little bit longer, but again, fairly fast responses to be fair for a free service. I'd say the iFastNet service from a positives perspective was definitely stronger than the other service providers positives, but let's look at the negatives. It didn't take long to spot quite an aggressive anti-bot script that iFastNet employs. That stops bots, which is great, but actually there are a lot of good bots out there for search engine optimization or for code level checks. And there were very few whitelisted exceptions, which seem to basically be search engine bots and AdSense. I actually think bots, the healthy kind, are essential in terms of making sure your website is set up correctly. And although you can do offline bot checks of files to make sure your code is correct, etc., nothing really beats hitting the live website to make sure that the site is reacting as you expected. Then we get on to limitations. Now, I'd never really worried about this with the previous providers. They give good disk space, good bandwidth, and I was never going to hit them. But I kept hitting the limits with the iFastNet or Byte.host service, I should say. And I couldn't really quite understand why. There was a 24-hour lockout of the website every time that happened, which was extremely frustrating. Um, and it seemed to happen particularly when I logged into WordPress, updated a plugin, etc. Something I never experienced as an issue with either of the other providers. And given the nature of free web hosting, log files are often turned off, which they were with, I think, all the providers that I tested. So I wasn't really able to dig into that to get a further understanding, but it was a major issue actually to the point that I used Cloudflare to redirect my website back to 000 web host every time I got locked out from the site because I didn't want it to be down for 24 hours. When I tried understanding the limits as much as I could, they were very secretive over it and are quite openly secretive. Seeing an openness as a vulnerability to people finding a way to circumnavigate those limitations. I'm not sure I really buy that, if I'm honest. So finally, we get down to a lack of communications, as I'm calling it. Basically, there was downtime, hours and hours of it as part of a single incident. Now, that can happen. And with free hosting, I kind of had to just accept that. But there was no communication about it. I went on the forum and there was a lot of communication with resellers desperately trying to help people and find out what had been going on but there was nothing official nobody officially came and made a statement 
a message appeared within the portal saying that planned maintenance was underway and was the case for you know the matter of a day or so that it took to to conduct the work they ended up confirming that they were rebuilding servers but for me planned maintenance is something you communicate beforehand if you don't communicate it beforehand it's likely something's gone wrong so um i think some planned maintenance probably went wrong and caused downtime but they should have communicated as soon as they were aware of the issue and given a view of how long the outage would have lasted so what have i done since well i am looking to move to paid hosting for those sites again but in the meanwhile, LifeFastNet's infrastructure was my preferred target, even with the anti-bot technology going on there. But the limitations for WordPress, or at least my WordPress blog in particular, just put me off from hosting the blog there. I need to upgrade. I need to confidently do things on the site without constantly worrying what that might be doing to the ability for the site to remain live. So I actually split my sites my custom coded PHP site, which seemed to have no issues on the iFastNet infrastructure, stayed with Byte.host, which used the iFastNet infrastructure. My WordPress blog, I actually moved back to 000 web host. It may have branding, it may not support email, etc. Hence why I need to probably move to a paid solution brutally. But in reality, I need my site to be live. And I felt that was posed at risk by the iFastNet imposed limitations. If this video has been useful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. And let me know who you host with in the comments, particularly if you use a free web host, what you feel are the pros and cons, and any you feel I've missed from the three providers I've looked into. Thanks for watching.